Hi, it's Dawn here and uh, Lacerre's eating. Uh, today I want to talk about um, how we condition for our first 50 miler endurance race. Um, kind of like how we condition, what we did to prepare, what we did, what was different um, than a 25 miler and also our race strategy. Uh, so uh, I always train with a heart rate monitor. This is a Garmin Phoenix 5X. Um, it is hooked up with an equine heart rate monitor on Lacerre. Ever since I started riding him, um, I have been using this so for the last uh, 11 years. Um, I've been using this setup just with different watches. Um, I started off uh, with, I think, uh, not a polar the other one there's there's three main brands for equine heart rate monitors there's the Garmin that'll do it uh, the polar and oh there's one more and I can't remember and that's probably the other one that I use but I used it so long ago that's the one that you can it has a watch it's very basic it's just for heart rate and um, <laughs> and uh, you can also have a, a handheld great I got Cody over here rubbing on his back like crazy and then I got some plane or something overhead um, okay so what was I saying um, uh, well I started from you know 11 years ago there's I went through many many different models and Garmin was the one that I ended up with the Garmin 310 uh, XT is an excellent watch that's a bright orange one that one's really awesome and probably one of the most accurate i really like that one um, but i went from that one which is really big and bulky and orange and i happen to hate orange um to a forerunner 235 i believe um it was red and black and my husband actually uses that one now um but that one is an excellent one and it, it's a really good price and then i upgraded to the garmin um 5x because this one you can it has full mapping capabilities as well so it has everything plus mapping and in my last race um i was able to get a, the gpx file downloaded to the watch and i was able to follow the map and it actually did save me from making wrong turns several times and i relied heavily on it if you watch my gopro video of the last race you'll see me looking at the watch constantly that's because i'm looking at his heart rate and i'm using that data and i'm also checking to make sure i'm on course um, our time, our average speed, uh, you know, just all that data to let me know where we're at so I can adjust accordingly. Um, to train for this, I really didn't do anything different. Um, it, it had been quite a while uh, in between the, the previous race to this last one. It was, there was a big gap, so he had kind of fallen out of shape. Um, he was probably at 70%. Uh, ready fit wise and so how I always start is I go out and and I have a set 11 mile training ride that I do um, in the riverbed sands water crossings all that stuff and we run through that and I watch his his numbers okay and then from there I can gauge okay how much more do we need to train to get you into top shape what I'm looking for is that we can run a lot and then as soon as we stop he is down to 50 or 55 um, beats per minute within five minutes of stopping uh, he's actually really good on our rides uh, usually uh, before I even get off of him he's already down so he he drops his heart rate really really well the thing that gets him is at a race he hangs a little bit not not bad but you know his heart rate is everything is higher everything bumps up because all this excitement all these horses and you know he's he's um he's really nosy he always has to watch what everyone else is doing and, and all that and meet all the other horses and stuff like that so um and he's competitive as well so all of that t uh, plays a part in a race that's different from a ride because at rides his heart rate drops down fast um and i can I, I, I can usually count on that so if i if if it doesn't uh, on a ride I know that something is wrong. If it doesn't at a race, 
at a race, that's when we, um, I go ahead and I have calming techniques for him where I've taught him, and you've seen in my other videos, where I say down, and he's supposed to, wait, no, I, no, I say drop. <laughs> I say drop, and then he's supposed to drop his head. Just the physical action of dropping his head um, is also linked in with his heart rate, dropping his head, calming down, because if he he is too hyped up he physic it's almost like he physically can't drop his head so if i tell him to drop he has to calm himself in order to go okay and drop so if i'm saying drop drop your head drop drop and he's not dropping then i know okay let's do something else let's you know pet him give him carrots calm him lower my voice you know whisper to him um stroke his eyes i'll stroke over his eyes and stuff and you know and then i'll try again drop and then he'll drop down and his heart rate will come down immediately so little techniques like that that i use at a race that i don't have to use at a ride sorry i'm trying to watch uh, the sun keeps moving See. All right. So, um, so yeah, what I'm looking for is um, being able to hold speed for longer uh, and then um, dropping down his recovery, his recovery all the time. And in a race, I will always do that. All, periodically throughout, I will stop him and check our recovery. So, you know, then we'll go another 10 miles. I'll stop him, check our recovery. If our recovery isn't good, meaning if it's not down in five minutes, five minutes I consider long. In a race, they give you 15 minutes, half an hour, uh, something like that, uh, depending. So, you know, they give you a lot of time, but they should be dropped down really quick. For me personally, I chose five minutes and oftentimes he's dropped down within two minutes. One, usually I can expect his heart rate to be down within a minute. And then if it's two minutes, I'm like, all right, that's still okay. Um, you know, but if he's top shape, within a minute and he's down to 50 or 55 okay so those are the numbers i'm looking at um let's see what else um uh so as we get oh the reason why i say um hold a the one of the challenges with training him is i i, I know his mind he's got a race brain you know, he, he thinks he's like all a racehorse and all that. And he was bred to be a racehorse, his ancestors and all that. So he's all like hot shot and he goes out there and he's all like, oh, you know, I come from secretariat and war admiral and, and blah, blah, blah. And, you know, I'm, I'm a racehorse. I can race, you know, I can beat you all. So it's hard to change the mind of anybody, a human, you know, a dog, a horse, um, their personality and all that. Um, maturity and patience comes, but it comes with time and experience. It's not something that you can really force upon a creature. So I know his brain. I know that he has to go fast and all that. So my job is to train his body to match his brain and, um, and make it so that we are able to do that without him crashing and burning. Because um, it actually took me a long time to finally take the leap and try a 50. Um, mostly because, you know, I'm lazy. And then the other thing is, you know, I, I was go, okay, what's the worst case scenario? The worst case scenario is that he dies. Um, the worst case scenario and my biggest nightmare is that I will wake up the next morning out of my trailer, come out of my trailer, look at his pen, and he's laying there stone cold dead. Um, that is the worst case scenario, and that's my biggest fear, and that drives everything that I do to not <laughs> avoid that at all costs, right? So that's why we haven't done a 50. Um, so when we were going to do this 50, I wanted to make sure that we were well, well, well within a good safety zone. Um, he's not good about eating and drinking. He doesn't take care of himself. He's got race brain. He's got big muscles. Um, he's a big guy. We just transitioned to barefoot two years ago. And back then, he couldn't even be walked, walked around or ridden. He needed to be retired. And now, you know, we're attempting a 50-mile race and, and all that. And so it's, it's, um, 
it's a huge accomplishment that we were able to do it but it was a it was a big leap um, and it, it just worried me a lot so that's why I wanted to take it easy um, how I approach training is uh, with the heart rate monitor the reason why the heart rate monitor is so valuable to me is because it allows me to custom tailor his workout and I use it on other horses I ride if I'm training or conditioning other horses absolutely because every horse is different um, you can find uh, training and conditioning guidelines where they say okay the first week um, do an hour of walking for, you know, that so many miles, right? Um, X, Y, and Z, X, Y, and Z. The first week do this, second week, third week, blah, blah, blah. Um, but that is a cookie cutter thing. I don't like cookie cutter things, right? I'm all into customizing. So that's why the heart rate monitor, it lets me know if he's in pain. It lets me know if he's pushing too hard. It lets me know anxiety, stress levels, um, uh, if someone's coming up behind us to pass he, and we're, we are walking and his heart rate was at a 70, all of a sudden someone comes up to pass us and his heart rate spikes up to 215. Why does it do that? I think is because his body is his adrenaline, his adrenaline flows. And because he's a racehorse and got that race brain, his body um, does a preemptive preemptive uh, strike and super loads his system with oxygen in preparation for a turbo boost and a run out of there um, so in that moment in those moments his heart rate is 215 um, I can ride that wave but in this race I was like no we're not gonna ride that wave because this is an inaccurate um, heart rate reading his he is supercharging his body and uh, I don't know what the proper terms are but you know super oxygenating oxygenating his cells in preparation for this and at 215 I can't monitor it plus I want him to learn that it's not when he is supercharged and ready to go and turbo boost and get that's not when he's going to be able to get to run if he wants to run he has to be calm heart rate low and race brain off if he meets those criteria i will let him run all day long and that is what he wants so that is how we're going to meet in a middle ground those are my rules that i've set for him and his rules is he doesn't want to be a walking horse he doesn't want to go slow he doesn't want to turtle any rides i'm like okay you don't want to do that well i don't want you to die <laughs> so these are my rules and so so that, that that's how we're meeting in the middle but um but yeah, you know, it's very interesting to to watch on the heart rate monitor, that kind of stuff. What was I say? Okay, I'm jumping around all over the place. I'm sorry, but that's how my brain works. Kind of like impossible. Anyways, um, so, oh, what, what, what the heart rate monitor basically gives me is like a tachometer on Lacer. Um, on your motorcycle or your car or your truck, you look at the different tachometers and they have different numbers. On a sport bike, the tachometer is going to be greatly different than on my uh, Ford 350 dually truck, right? And the power bands are different um, and all that. Um, you know, the truck doesn't have the top speed of my R1, but it has a whole mu much more, you know, torque and ho horsepower and stuff on the low. and and it, it's just um, all of those differences, that's how like the different horses are. Like a, a Arabian or your, um, your quarter horses or your thoroughbred or your draft horses, you know, think of the tachometers on, you know, all your different cars, the Prius, um, the, the Ford Dooley, uh, and, and, and then let's say, uh, I don't know, let's say a Viper or a Corvette, uh, something like that, or, or uh, a Mustang, um, you know, so, something like that. If you start thinking in terms of that, that might help. But anyways, imagine a tachometer, right? You have, you have the, you know, 1,000 all the way up to, let's say 5,000 RPMs. That, that's your working RPMs. Um, 
uh, let me back up. Let's look at the tachometer, uh, typical, uh, let's say an average tachometer in a car because that's what everyone um, can maybe relate to the best. Um, then usually six to 7,000 RPMs, um, you're getting into like an orange zone. Some tax will actually mark it as orange, some don't, some uh, whatever, okay? So, and then um, your red zone, we know the red line, red line, okay? So that's the important one. Uh, different horses um, are gonna have different red lines, but you never want to go into red line scratch that never say never I use red line when um, when we're training and I know that he's gonna hit red line in a race but that's usually at the beginning of the race when he's in full-blown race mode and it is uh, unavoidable um, so that but as much as I can in a race I do not want him to get anywhere near red line Red line on him is going to be 180 beats per minute and up. I'll say 180 to 220. I don't know if I've ever seen him get as high as 220. I think 215 is more, but oh, I'm sorry. I am such a, a, a literal person and I hate to be inaccurate. That's why I keep backtracking and correcting myself. But um, okay, I'm gonna try to stop doing that. I'm gonna give you a general thing and say, take all my numbers as a general you know because i'm bad with numbers and uh it might be off but know what i mean <laughs> hear what i mean not what i'm not what i'm saying anyways um okay so in every vehicle or you know horse or whatever we have a sweet spot this sweet spot in a car is when you're going to have the least amount of wear on your engine and your car and you know and you're going to get the best gas mileage at this sweet spot you can run forever um and not and not be overly burning and the reason why you don't want to overburn is because one you don't want to run out of gas two every fuel that you burn is going to have a waste byproduct and in the horse that waste bright byproduct is going to be contained in their system until they are able to expel it by breath by perspiration urine or poop um, in a car it exhausts out the exhaust pipe right so it, it it's coming out constantly but in remember in the horse those it's closed in until it gets out in those manner and if you if you are not drinking enough you might not be able to flush out enough of that waste that waste a too much waste accumulated in their closed system can kill them um, so that's why that's important. That's why you don't want to be running in the orange or red zone in a long distance race, um, you know, long periods of time. And oftentimes you can't see that during the race, especially if you have a hot blood um, because their adrenaline is up and that is going to uh, suppress all the symptoms until they get back to camp wait half an hour an hour or so and then they crash and then they can crash and they can burn so that's what you totally want to avoid so this sweet spot if you work out it's also like when you do reps if i if i take a two pound weight and i do this i can do this for ever you know until i am literally my brain is just so bored and i shut down but my muscles can do this forever it's not really getting a workout and stuff but it's also not going to really condition these muscles it's not going to push them to be any bigger um or anything all i'm doing is burning some calories but otherwise i'm not getting any fitter with a two pound weight if I want to build muscle or build fitness, I have to push into the orange and the red zone. And that's when you get the big, bigger weight 
and you do the reps and then when you start feeling that burn that burn is the start the orange zone and then you get to the point where you're like I can't I can't okay you're approaching the red zone and then you're like I can't and then your trainer or whatever is going come on one last one last one come on dig deep pull and then you ah! and you know you're all shaking and all that that is your red line um, and when you're in those zones that is when you're going to push for improvement it's also going to be when you're tearing stuff um, when you get into those zones you are tearing you are making minuscule little bustle tears um, but by breaking is how we build better uh, the body so that's the same thing with him if if i want hey go 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 that way you have to come from behind don't don't come from up here go 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 um so in training in a normal ride if i'm training him and i'm conditioning him yeah we will push into the red zone um controlled wise right because minuscule little muscle tears are good uh pushing the body and pushing that threshold is good but exceeding it too far and then you have a dead horse so you have to that's why these numbers are so valuable um Go. 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 Um, okay, so so thinking of it as a tachometer uh, might might be helpful. Uh, and that's how I see these these numbers. So with Lacerre, his resting heart rate is 28. Um, and then his resting heart rate when we are ah, ow, when we're doing stuff is um probably uh 40 up to 40 anything up to 40 he's still resting and then his resting heart rate when we're out and about and you know running and stuff is usually around 50. um and then his working his uh, starting working heart rate is in 70s um, and so from 70 to 130 beats per minute I would call that his sweet spot um, that is where he's not really gonna be burning much and he's at his most efficient and he's oh that is slimy so nasty um, he's not, you know, he's not burning much. He's not, wh which means he's not making a lot of waste by byproduct, lactic acid stuff in his system. Um, he can hold that for a long period of time. And then um, anything, where did I go up to? 130. 130 to 150 is not the sweet spot, but it's between the sweet spot and the orange zone. 160 to 170, orange zone. 170 to 220, red zone. Um, or 180 to 220 is red zone, something like that, okay? So in training, I watch it, I look at these numbers and I interpret it and I apply it to him. I want to push him, but also in a controlled manner. In a race, I stay in his sweet zone and that's it. Um, he will hit red line on his own at the beginning and when horses try to pass him and stuff like that, he hits red line, but that's also a fake red line. Um, his system is uh, pre-oxygenating, but but it's not, you know, since we're not take, since we're not using that, um, I do wonder what would happen if we used that pre-oxygenated state. Um, but I'm not going to test that theory out on a race, right? All right. So uh, strategy for the race: 
I knew that I would need to get his mind. And the only way to get his mind is to let him, let him run. You know, don't fight him. Be um, I did have to, you know, rein him in a lot, but I'm gonna try my best to not be a jerk to everyone else and also let him um, get what he wants because um, fighting is going to burn. That, that burns a lot more in me and him than is necessary. You know, let him run a little bit and then he'll be calmer and then I can control him better and all that. So uh, the first 25 miles of the race, we, we pretty much ran and trotted um, and I just made sure to keep him out of red line and orange as much as possible and to stay in the sweet spot. Then uh, the second loop of the race, the second 25 miles, I pulled it in tremendously. And at first I was like, okay, we will not ever exceed 160 beats per minute. As soon as he hits 160, we're going to walk until he is back down to 80. And then at 80 for a little while, then we can go ahead and uh, pick up a trot and <clears throat> until 160. Now, at, at one point, it seemed like the um, when I would let him pick up more speed, he was immediately jumping to 160. Um, so if it was easy for him, he'd be able to hang out in the sweet zone for a long time before hitting into 160 orange zone but he wasn't he was hitting right into 160 right away so then i was like okay you know what let's make that even tighter we're not going to exceed 150 and we're going to walk until you drop to to 70. and so that was how that was what dictated our pace and then the other thing that ended up dictating our pace was my knees. My knees was giving out on me. And that's because of the time in the saddle was killing my knees. Um, no. So, so uh, those were the numbers that I use. When you use the heart rate monitor, you'll be able to see things like, okay, how quickly is he going into uh, orange zone or red zone? If he's going to it quick, that means that he's tired, um, even though he won't admit it. If he's able to hold the sweet spot for extended periods, then that's good. So there's also this thing where um, they need to up, uh, they need to shift up a gear. Um, I've noticed it when uh, we're doing an extended trot and he's doing it for a long time, that um, all of a sudden I'm watching his heart rate go, go um, up and up and up, and I'm like, uh-oh, we need to slow down. But then he chooses to kick into a canner. And then as soon as he does that, his heart rate drops down to 120. So, you know, that's very interesting that you would think, oh, if he shifts into a canner, um, that's gonna use more, but no, sometimes it uses less. It's, it's like he needs, he needs to shift up a gear, you know, at, at, a, at an extended trot. And pr that probably makes sense. You know, maybe at extended trot, you know, those um, hooves or, or legs were getting tired and then he needs to just do something different and, and then it's fine again or something. Or sometimes with the, with the, can with the trot, it can be very jarring. Um, but in a canner, they can use the momentum and stuff. It does take more calories to, you know, propel all of this mass, our combined mass forward, but it can give, ah, it can give them a little um, relief. And I see that with the heart rate monitor. Um, so there is that. Uh, for his electrolytes, I did something different. In the past, I used to just do, um, uh, get, start his electrolytes three days before a race. This time I started it two weeks before the race um, and because I'm not able to give him oral um, oral electrolytes during the race so I have to hide his electrolytes in his grain so that but that did work um, two weeks before and then two weeks after and but not the full dose um, I kind of taper it so like two weeks before I'm giving half dose 
and then a week before I'm giving full dose and <coughs> and then same after the race um hey stop so uh so that's his electrolytes oh and we didn't have any issues we didn't have any issues at all and you know how i was saying that my biggest fear is waking up in the morning and finding a dead horse that's why for um the this race i took that picture of the sunrise and him and i watching the sunrise together that's why because that was my biggest fear and it was that moment that i was like oh okay we're doing it right we we got this you know this is the end of the race because for me the end of the race is knowing that uh, we got it and i don't know that we got it until the next morning if and then the next morning if i have a bright alert horse or if i have a colicking you know hurt sore angry horse um so that that's why i had i love that picture um okay so i guess that's it um was it's very very simple basically putting a tachometer on the horse and it lets you choose you know what speeds to go for how long how you know what pace you can hold it at and stuff uh he didn't ha have any muscle soreness really his back was fine the saddle my saddle and saddle pad combination was good um the only thing is he doesn't like cold water on his belly anywhere near his belly or flank area he doesn't want cold water there uh and that might be just a personal thing but he in the past he's had that weird thump thing he not anymore oh the the electrolytes i was using is um finish lines apple a day and enduramax i think enduramax uh is very very potent and can give some horses um i'm gonna throw out this carrot bag can give some horses ulcers or or kind of like burn their burn their gut or something so <laughs> no more carrots oh god <laughs> um so with the enduramax i only i only use that very very sparingly and that one I was not part of the preload that one was only for the race itself um, I think the, the the night before the race the race and then the, the next morning um, that's when I use Enduramax and I use Enduramax and finish line mostly because those things their doses is only for a thousand pound horse and he's 1300 pounds and I think he needs a little bit more than normal because he is, um, I have nothing. I have nothing for you. Oh, can you see? He's lifting his leg. He's like, please give me something. I have nothing. I have nothing. Look, there's nothing here. Nothing here. Um, so, uh, and, and I was worried about doubling it up and stuff, but I know that he'll burn it and he was he was burning it we had no symptoms of 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 over overloading electrolytes we had no symptoms of that and we had no symptoms of being in deficit of electrolytes so it actually worked out great i want to experiment with uh lesser amounts and stuff um because i do worry about overloading as well but I know that at least we are in some kind of a safe zone with this protocol for him. So um, anyways, that's it. Oh, um, after a race, we do rest for two weeks. Um, I, I did a quick little seven mile romp through town doing a scavenger hunt, you know, fun ride with friends. Um, that was good. That was a week. Okay, one week after the 50 mile race. So. Um, that was good to see where we were at both of us in the healing neither one of us are sore anymore but we both still fatigue a lot quicker than usual and that's because we are still in recovery so one week after a race we're, we're still in recovery so he gets he gets at least two weeks um, to recover at least before any difficult work um, and uh two, so two weeks before and two weeks after a race 
um, it's pretty much no no riding really or really really light stuff no no hard training and remember horses do hold their fitness a lot better than we do so anyways that's it um, <laughs> I hope that was helpful uh, and any questions let me know please like share whatever um, so that I know that uh, you guys like us <laughs> And um, be safe riding, and I'll talk to y'all later. Bye. Okay, say bye. Look at the camera. Say bye. I got to teach you to say bye. Say bye.